Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the University of Dundee Master of Education webinar. My name is Helen Sparopoulos. I'm the Admissions Manager at Stafford Global. And joining me this evening all the way from the university is Dr. Richard. Uh, good evening to you, Dr. Richard. Hello, hello. Lovely to, uh, to, to see you and, and welcome to everybody for joining this, uh, this session this evening. It's great to have you here. Good, excellent. And uh, I can see that we do have quite a few students that have joined us. Um, I can see that they are situated in the UAE. We also have uh, KSA and we do have a few from Africa as well. So uh, welcome this evening. Now, how we are going to do the presentation is I'm just briefly going to introduce you to Stafford Global and then I am going to hand you over to Dr. Richard who is going to take you through uh, the um, uh, program and towards the end of the presentation you will have the chance to type out any questions that you may wish to ask uh, Dr. Richard or myself. What I am going to do is try and group these questions together because they normally are very similar or identical so please do listen out for your question and answer okay so let's get started now who is Stafford Global now Stafford Global um, has been uh, in the region for quite a few years uh, actually it is our 30th year this year and uh, we basically are a resource center for six UK universities one of which is the University of Dundee now, the mere fact that you are here with us this evening means that you have been in touch with one of our experienced academic consultants. And our role at Stafford Global is to assist you throughout the entire application process and make sure that your application is strong enough to actually achieve that very important unconditional offer. Now, we do offer a variety of programs ranging from uh, bachelor degrees right through until doctorates. So we really do have all the programs for your personal and your professional needs. Okay, so I'm now going to hand you over to Dr. Richard and I will join you towards the end of the presentation. Over to you, Dr. Richard. Helen, thank you so much for that, that introduction and, and welcome again everybody to this uh, webinar where we're going to tell you more about the Master of Education program which is delivered by the University of Dundee. Um, you'll see there from the front slide that, uh, that we are one of the, according to the Times Higher Education um, newspaper, Times of London newspaper, we're one of the top, world's top 250 universities. Given that there are, there are more than 200 universities in the UK alone, I think we're quite proud of our um, academic um, quality and, uh, and the accolades we've received. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that as the webinar uh, progresses this evening. So um, we've had the introduction already from Helen and tells you a little bit more about Stafford. And what I'm going to do is give you more detail about the University of Dundee, but in particular, the Master of Education, the MED course. And I'm going to be able to uh, give you more details about what the course involves, what the benefits of stu studying uh, with Stafford and the University of Dundee uh, will be to you. Uh, and as Helen has said, there'll be an opportunity for some questions at the end the session. So I'll give you a brief introduction to myself. My name is Richard Holm. I am a, a, a reader and a lecturer um, in education studies. My background was I was a teacher for, for a number of years in England and I taught in predominantly mainly in the elementary or primary school sector. I then moved uh, into higher education having completed my master's degree myself. So in the same way that you are interested in master's level study, uh, this was something that I was doing a number of years ago before I made the transition and moved into working in higher education. Um, I completed my doctorate a number of years ago and the area that I'm interested in is teacher professional development and teacher professional learning. And the MED Master of Education program is very much focused on professional development, professional learning that can be applied to you in your professional setting. Um, up until uh, January of this year, I was the programme director, I was the academic lead 
for the Master of Education program. Um, and that, that role is currently filled by uh, Dr. Anna Robb. And if you were successful in joining the MED program at, at Dundee, then you would probably get a chance to meet Anna uh, and a variety of other staff. We have a range of staff and people with a different expertise that work on the MED, the Master of Education program. So that's a little bit about me. Now, the University of Dundee, it's, it's got a long um, history. Uh, it, be before we were a university in our own right, we were a college of St. Andrews University, which you may have heard of. St. Andrews University is a, is a, is a small distance geographically from Dundee. Perhaps St. Andrews is most famous because it's the university that, uh, that Prince William and, um, and Catherine studied at, and it's where they, they met. And Dundee was a, was a college of St. Andrews University. And then uh, it was created, it developed and created, it was created as a university in its own right. And we've had many, many um, decades since then of successful delivery of a range of different education areas. One thing that we're really proud of is the fact that we make a difference and that we do this through courses such as education and the MED and are able to act locally in Dundee, in Scotland, but also internationally. Uh, and I mentioned before some of the accolades and we were, we were awarded uh, fairly recently uh, one of the, the best young universities. We're not that young, we've been around, around quite a long time now, uh, but we do think that we are very forward thinking, forward focused, and you'll find that through your, uh, the teaching experience, the courses that you, that you may choose to study with us, uh, and, and ultimately the research that you will engage with uh, through the course. Now, the, the final thing to say is that, that Dundee um, has as its, um, as its sort of guiding principle that we aim to transform lives. And as you know, as educators, as teachers, as people who work in the, in the educational sector, uh, this is what we do. We try to transform lives every day. And the University of Dundee tries to, to mirror that and also achieve that through the work with our students so that they can make that difference with the, uh, the students, the young people that they in turn work with themselves. So I mentioned one or two of the, the accolades, a few of the awards. These are some of the things that have been awarded to us over the last two or three years. Um, I've already mentioned the Times of London Higher Education um, rankings, and then there's the Good University Guide rankings as well. Um, and, uh, and you can maybe look at those yourself. They're all available online, and you can put in the Master of Education course or the University of Dundee to see how well we perform for things like teaching quality, for assessment and feedback and for overall student experience. So if you are interested in, in applying to, to, to come and study with, with Stafford and with the University of Dundee, then, then you might want to find out more uh, by, by searching for some of that information. So having told you a little bit about the University of Dundee, I'm now going to tell you some um, more information about the Master of Education programme. So the Master of Education programme is uh, accredited at what we call in Scotland level 11 postgraduate level. Now it might be called different things in other parts of the world but it's basically the level up the next stage on from undergraduate bachelor's level study and you will be studying a range of different modules and they are focused as I've already mentioned on professional development so a range of different topics and areas that will help you improve as a practitioner who is based in a relevant educational setting. Normally, that might be a school, and we have many, many students from international school settings, and it might be early years or nursery, it might be primary or elementary or middle years or secondary or high school. But we also have educators from different backgrounds, such as working in further education with adult learners, higher education, or even vocational educational settings. Reflective practice is a particularly important part of this uh, course, and that is one of the modules that I lead on. Um, and my background and interest in professional development and professional learning, and the research I've carried out in that area, allows me to support and teach students in this particular area. You've also got the opportunity for work-based inquiry in most of the modules, and an opportunity to carry out some action research. So research projects that will have a benefit and impact for you as a teacher and educator 
and the students and pupils you might be working with. Now, this is a really important point, which we need to stress to people. Because this is a professional development program at master's level for people who are already teaching or working in education, it does not lead to a QTS qualification. So if you complete the Master of Education program, you will have a master's level uh, certificate and qualification, but what that does not necessarily do is guarantee you the option of working in a UK state school. So if anybody is interested in qualified teacher status for the UK or for another country, we strongly recommend they check the regulations with that particular country or the governing body. So although you can exit the master's programme with after two modules with what is a postgraduate certificate, that is not the same as the PGCE, which allows you to teach in England or the PGD that allows you to teach in Scotland. So we just need to make that very clear to people because sometimes at the end of the course, uh, people ask for the QTS certificate. And because there is not a placement element to our course, we are not able to offer that option. Now, if you're unsure about that, then you can contact us or you can contact um, Helen or the Stafford uh, representatives for guidance on that. But it's also worth checking out with your relevant uh, government or registering body where you're interested in working. So an overview of the course, we have uh, two options available to you. We have a part time um, and also a part time fast track study option. This gives you flexibility. It gives you the opportunity to, to study at a time that suits you. And we use a blended learning approach on the Master of Education course. And this includes live sessions that you can join, which will be delivered through our virtual learning environment, where you will uh, join a session with fellow students remotely, and also asynchronous content, so um, materials and resources that you can engage with in your own time. There is um, the, the final um, outcome of the course is that you will have this master's level qualification or certificate that um, has a strong basis in practice. We're also recognised and accredited by the International Baccalaureate Organisation. So for those of you working in international schools or those of you interested in working in an IB school or who currently um, already work in an IB school, this may be of interest. And I'm going to talk about that in a bit more detail in a subsequent slide. We've got a wide range of students um, from different sectors of education from around the world. When you start the course with us, we encourage students to um, access an interactive map of the world and put themselves on it. And I love going and looking at that map and seeing where these students have come from. And we've got students from, from every continent, um, from, from North and South America, all the way through Europe, Africa, for Asia, um, from, from the countries that you're representing today yourselves, um, and, and across the globe. And it, it's always amazing that when you're working with a group of international students and you're teaching a live session um, where they are in the world and the different time zones they're in. A colleague once uh, told a story of how somebody was, I think, going home from work uh, in Japan and it was something like 11 o'clock at night or they're on their way back having been working in a night school, whereas there was somebody in, in, in the United States who was only just getting up in the morning. So the, this variety of, of backgrounds is a real benefit of studying um, with the University of Dundee. So why would you uh, choose to study at master's level? You're already here, so you're already interested in this course. So some of these will apply to you, but you may not have considered some of these. Um, you've got an opportunity to develop your knowledge and your understanding, and in particular, the way you view education across the world. So we will hopefully change your perspectives. You'll develop a range of transferable skills, and you'll also enhance a specialism. So you may be interested in early or nursery education. You may be interested in teaching um, digital skills to, to pupils or to learners. You may have um, an expertise in modern foreign languages. And this course allows you to, to tailor your learning to that specific area of interest. Uh, there is always the option to develop your career. And we've had lots of former students and alumni who've gone on to work potentially in universities 
but often it helps them develop their leadership um, skills and attributes and then progress their career maybe with their current employer or move to a new employer to take on a management leadership uh, potentially principal or, or head teacher role um, it gives you this opportunity to progress your career um, and in some countries um, although i've already explained the situation for england and scotland it may fulfill the professional requirements uh, for you to teach um, in those countries so it's worth checking that out in advance if this is a course that will um, that will fulfill that requirement so studying the MED at the University of at Dundee we've already mentioned the international reputation and the expertise of staff we have staff from a wide range of countries as well with all sorts of different expertise um, and and all those staff are engaged in research in those areas so they can support you and help you uh, be kept up to date with the most recent um, advancements and developments in the areas you're interested in. We've got a wide range of links to different stakeholder organisations. We obviously work closely with Stafford and we've mentioned the International Baccalaureate as well. Um, you'll be part of this international or multinational cohort, getting a chance to meet other people from different perspectives and, and they will learn from you as well. And we try to focus our teaching on professional practice. Uh, so it helps you develop as a professional. Uh, and this idea of you understanding and developing your leadership potential and research skills runs throughout the entire Master of Education programme. So although the title of the course is an MED, Master of Education, if you complete all 180 credits, you have the option of selecting particular modules throughout this, uh, this course which will allow you to graduate with an MED or Master of Education with a named award in one of the following. So if you've got a specific interest in leading in education, in, in management, um, possibly administration, then you might want to focus on educational leadership. We've already mentioned this idea of um, international education and the international baccalaureate so you could select modules that give you a named award in international education we also have a named award in inclusive education so if you're interested in special educational needs or additional support needs for learners then that might be the option you opt for and choose for and we also have an optional named award for nursery and early years educators now if you chose not to go down one of those uh, specialist named award options and you selected a random choice of modules based on your interests then you would exit with the master of education in leading learning and teaching and that's what most people choose to do unless they have a particular interest in one of those specialist areas now when i studied for a master's um, many years ago i took the option of studying a range of different modules and I looked at um, topics such as innovation in education and children's literature and um, reflective practice and then my thesis my dissertation project focused on behavior management of pupils and, uh, and learners so I took the route of the generic leading learning and teaching um, option because that suited me uh, but you might have uh, um, questions about that you might have um, thoughts on wanting to specialize it doesn't make a huge amount of difference for you in your career nobody has ever asked me whether um, i had a particular named award or not for my masters or even what uh, classification my master's degree was but for you to develop your knowledge and understanding or potentially if you wanted to specialize maybe in a leadership role in a nursery or early education setting it might be beneficial for you to focus in that particular way so these are the optional modules that you can choose from and if you were to complete the full master of education course you would complete five modules in total you'd start with reflective practice there would be then two optional modules and then you would complete the course with a research methods module and a double module dissertation project research project 
So the two that you could select from can be any of these. We have international education, we have a module in inclusive education, we have one that focuses on the well-being of children and young people, and then we have two modules um, towards the bottom there around innovation in education and leadership and organisational development. And those last two are, are often a popular choice for somebody who is thinking about pursuing um, a, a, their career in a, in a leadership-focused way. So there would be the the core modules, and then they would supplement it with innovation and education and leadership and organizational development. Alternatively, you might be interested in the named award in inclusion. So in that case, you would probably choose the inclusive educator and the well-being of children and young people modules. Um, and each of those modules is led by specialists, by people with expertise in those areas, and um, you will be working with students who have similar interests uh, as you. Uh, on those modules. So there you can see on the screen the, the way the structure works for this. So if you were going down leading learning and teaching, you would pick any two of those optional modules on the previous slide, and then you could focus your dissertation on any topic you wish. If you wanted one of the other four named awards, you would pick specific modules and then your dissertation would focus in that area as well. So this is something to think about after the session today. Would you like to take that more generic, generalist approach with leading learning and teaching as your named award, or would you like a more specialist experience on the masters? Okay, so I've already uh, mentioned a few times the international baccalaureate. And as you are working in international settings, I'm sure you're familiar with the IB organisation, the, the world's largest um, accredited curriculum for international schools. So we are one of uh, very few providers um, in the UK, uh, and there aren't many in the world, that offer this suite of courses uh, that you can choose to study alongside your Master of Education MED course. So the way that this works is our programme is accredited by the IB organization so they look at our teaching they look at our curriculum and we design it so it fulfills their requirements so there are three options for you and you'll see that um, that the first two the certificate where you would exit after two modules or the advanced certificate where you would complete the entire MED they do not require any IB experience so this is if you were thinking about working in the IB in future, then you could complete either the certificate in leadership practice alongside your master's certificate, or you could complete the advanced certificate in leadership research alongside your master of education course. And these include a specialist module that will help you understand the IB better. Now, if you do that, then you need to let us know at the beginning that you were wanting to do this. And then when you exit the course, as well as graduating with either your PG certificate from the MED or your full MED, you would then apply to the IB organization for the relevant certificate or advanced certificate. And what we would do is we would confirm with the IB that you'd engaged with this studies and then they would, um, they would then issue the certificates to you. The third option is for anybody who has three years teaching experience in an IB school. And what you would do then is you would complete the MED as normal, but you would focus your studies, for example, your dissertation research project on an IB context. So in that case, you don't need to do a specific module relating to the IB because you already have that knowledge and experience, but you do need to focus your studies on this IB setting. And then again, at the end of that course, having exited with a full MED from ourselves, you would apply to the IB organization who would issue you with the advanced certificate in learning and teaching research. If you have any questions about these various routes, then you can contact, um, you can contact um, Stafford and they will be able to give you some more guidance on that. So this is the typical part-time route, which includes the an IB, Advanced Teaching and Learning Research route. So normally this is what you would do, you would study in your first semester, and our semester start dates are the end of October, November, 
and then again in April. So we don't follow the traditional UK semester times for our online learners. We start the first cohort in end of October, November, and then your next module will start around April. And our reasons for this is we are conscious of the different holidays and vacation times that, that students have around the world. And we've tried to build this in so that you are able to take some time and it's not impacting on when you will have your assessments due in. And as a former master's student myself, that's really useful if you're working full time because you can use that time uh, possibly when you're on vacation or if you've got a break from teaching or in school to work on some of your studies, especially the final dissertation module. So you'll see this is how it tracks through. Normally, a part-time full MED will take you three years with a module each semester in year one, a module in each semester in year two, and then the dissertation will take you the full year and you can exit with this uh, with 180 credits with a full MED. There are exit points after 60 credits and 120 credits, and that will give you, um, that will allow you to, um, to, to leave at that particular point, and you would still get the certificate at certificate level or diploma level if you choose not to go on and complete the full Master of Education course. So we have two options uh, for studying, and the first one is what we recommend to most students. So you would uh, complete, um, if you started at the end of October, uh, which is the one when our next intake will begin studying, then you would complete one 30 credit module and you have 17 weeks study. You then have um, a submission date and uh, the feedback will be provided to you within three weeks. If for some reason you have um, some, some difficulties, maybe you've struggled with part of the assessment, you may be asked to resubmit to make sure that what you've submitted for your assessment is at master's level. And then uh, again, you'd have three weeks to do that. And then assuming you pass, you move to the next module again. The, the double uh, module, the 60 credit module, which is your final dissertation, you have 46 weeks for that. So if we, because you'll be carrying out a piece of research, whether it's a desk-based research project or you're collecting your own data, you get that 46 weeks period to do that. The notional study time is recommended between 15 and 20 hours a week study. So if you're working in a part-time job, or a full-time job even, you need to be aware that the study time that you need to put into this over those 17 weeks is considerable. We say for a 30 credit module, you probably need around 300 hours time of study to be successful. Now that includes attending the live webinars that are available or watching the recordings back, engaging with the activities that your module tutor will set for you, receiving formative feedback from your module tutor or from your module uh, support uh, staff member, and then all the reading that will go along with the particular module you're studying with. Now that's something that, that, that people sometimes find um, find a bit of a surprise that we're asking for this level of engagement. From experience, for people to be able to succeed in the modules and to complete the entire masters, we need you to be able to commit to this level of engagement and reading. Some of the concepts we introduce, because it's a master's level, can be quite challenging. They're quite new to some people. Even if you've studied education before, if you have a, a teaching qualification. So we, we, re we really, um, we really value the importance of this engagement in the activities that the tutors and the module leaders set for you. Occasionally, people wish to, to complete faster, and we do have this fast track option available for you. And in this version, uh, you can complete two 30 credit modules within the 17 weeks period. This is a very challenging option for you because you're effectively needing to study 35 hours a week alongside any other responsibilities you might have. Now, if someone's taking a career break, then that might work for them. Uh, but, we, but we do strongly recommend that people um, take the part-time route. And I was working full-time as a teacher when I completed a master's, and that's what I did. I did the part-time route, and they don't take the fast-track route. What we don't give you an option for is to do the dissertation, the double module, as a fast-track. You can only do that over the year. So the very fastest you could complete 
would be in two years because you could do um, two 30 credit modules in semester, the first semester, two 30 credit modules the next semester, and you do need a year to complete the 60 credit dissertation module. And that's because you need time to develop your project, you need time to apply for ethical approval to collect the data, and that process can take 12 weeks. So that that work that in, encroaches into the time that you have available to then collect the data, analyze the data, and to write up the 15,000 word final dissertation project. So these are our entry requirements. Um, for all uh, courses, all the routes, all the different named awards, you need an undergraduate degree, but that can be in any discipline. It doesn't have to be an undergraduate education degree, it can be in any subject. If your undergraduate degree was not taught in English, then we do have English language requirements. And this is at IELTS of 6.5 or equivalent. And all this information is available on the University of Dundee course pages for the MED. We also need some practical experience. So if you're an educator who currently works in a relevant setting, and you want to enhance your professional learning, then that will be sufficient for you to meet the entry requirements. Alternatively, you may have worked in education previously and have relevant work experience, but you might not currently be teaching or working in a school, and that's fine. The reason we ask for this is because most of the modules ask, us, ask you to reflect on your experience as an educator and a teacher. So without any experience in education, you're not going to be able to fulfill the requirements of the modules. And this um, will be part of the application process. You'll explain that experience and you'll obviously evidence that you have an undergraduate degree and the requisite requirements for English language. So sometimes uh, people uh, ask at the beginning about the graduation time scales. We have a system in the university which all our courses have to follow which is a board of examiners meeting where the, um, the the students who have completed their studies by that point have their grades agreed and ratified by that committee this means that there are two graduation opportunities each year in june or november so depending on when you finished your studies will dictate when you are able to graduate. If you have not completed um, your studies, then registry may contact you to say that you're eligible to graduate, but this is dependent on you passing the final modules. So if you receive an email going, oh, you're, you're, in, you're in the list for graduation, don't assume that you have graduated. <laughs> this is sent to all students, and then it's the board of examiners that confirms whether you've uh, you, you've passed or not. The reason for doing that is to let you know in advance that you may be graduating so that they can get uh, the number of students in attendance set up as well. Um, when you've completed, uh, if you are needing for a job to prove that you've completed the master's but you've not yet been through graduation, the graduation office can give you a certificate to say yes, you've successfully completed the course, you've just not gone through the graduation uh, ceremony. But Certificates um, can't be provided, your final transcript certificate cannot be provided until you've gone through that ceremony in June or November. Now, you don't have to attend in person for graduation. You can, you can graduate in absentia, which basically means that you weren't able to come to Dundee. But we'd love to see you here. We, we get students who've studied with us for three years. We've met them online. They've been part of tutorials. They've been a, a real important part of the MED student community, but they've never physically been with us on campus and they come over maybe with their friends or their family to Dundee for the graduation ceremony. So it would be great to see you, uh, if, you if you get to that stage. So um, just, just to finish off, we've got some quotes here from some of our students. Uh, these are some of the things that they, the, the feedback that they've given us. Um, the ability to inquire into their own practice, to carry out research, to investigate how they work has really helped them see areas for improvement. Um, another student commented that by coming to understand professionalism and in particular reflective practice, this has empowered them to take their teaching to the next level. So as 
well as enhancing a career. It's given them a chance to be better teachers and to get the, the enjoyment from that. Um, another student commented how good the student support has been, describing it as excellent. And we get very strong feedback about the tutors and the teaching staff. Um, and in this particular example, the students identified that the tutor was dedicated, efficient, welcoming and friendly. So we hope that if you choose to come and study with us at the University of Dundee, you'll have a very similar experience. In fact, we're confident that you will. Um, and finally, if you've got any questions about fees, then, um, then don't go to the university website for this. Contact Stafford Associates Academic Consultant directly. And this is the really important bit. For the next cohort of students that start at the end of October, November, the application deadline is the 11th of September. So we're really, uh, we're really keen to receive your application, but bear that in mind because any received after that date will then be pushed back to the next intake, which won't be until the following April. So I think now is the opportunity for questions. Uh, if you want to jot down our details here, you can, uh, you can contact um, Helen if it's about admissions and it's about Stafford in particular. Um, if you had any general questions about the master's program or you wanted to know anything about Dundee, then I'm more than happy to answer those as well. There, there's our details. So Helen, I think that's the, the end of my presentation. Hopefully I haven't, hopefully I haven't bored people too much and they've been infused and we've got some questions that have come through. It's uh, fantastic. Thank you so much, Dr. Richard. It was very, very no informative. Uh, yes, we do have a few questions and I've been working tirelessly in the background just trying to group them all. Okay, right. so um, this question is a very common question. Um, mm. Does the program uh, provide a QTS status? I need, I need to, we need to be very clear on this. We do, so although you can exit with 60 credits, which is, has the title a postgraduate certificate, it is not the same as the PGCE that will allow you to teach in English state schools or Scottish schools. So it's really important that you check with the, the country you're working with, the organization you're working with, that the Master of Education certificate, diploma or full MED is the sort of thing that they want. Because we, we do not include practical placements as part of this course, and for England and Scotland, the, the accrediting bodies, they require you to have completed a PGC or a PGDE, which includes a practical placement. So it does not give you QTS for the UK. Other countries around the world may accept this, but it's, it's up to you to check that. The reason we don't give this guidance is because there's more than 200 countries in the world and they change their rules all the time and it's impossible for us to keep up. So it's better that you check that first. But in, in the sense of QTS to allow you to say, come and teach in London or in Edinburgh in a state school, no, it doesn't. Okay, fantastic, good. Um, no and the next uh, question is about um, assessments and mm. and failing of assessments. And um, I really hope that you know, you're not thinking of failing any of your assessments. But okay, this is this is the question. If I fail a module, do I get another chance to submit? And then a follow up question to that is, how many times am I permitted to fail a module? <laughs> The first thing I'm going to say to you is failing is not a bad thing. So as a master's student, there was a particular module I studied that I had difficulty with. It was the research methods module. And there was a particular element of the research methods module that as a student I struggled with. And I was required to resubmit as a student. And then I've gone on later to do my PhD and I've gone on to, to, to lead modules and to work and to teach in a university. So failing or not, not passing first time is not a bad thing. It, lets, it helps you learn. It helps you understand where you need to improve. So, so we, we try to talk about this in, not, not that we, we encourage people to fail or want to think that people are going to fail, but to say actually it gives you this opportunity to learn from it. So if you um, were studying one of the modules and um, for some reason, a bit like I did when I was a student, you found one of the areas particularly difficult, 
then the first thing we encourage you to do is make sure you take up your opportunity for formative assessment. So for all the modules, you'll be allocated a tutor and the module leaders will let you know who this is. And you will have an opportunity to send a sample of your work to that person for formative feedback. So this is one way of giving somebody feedback before they hand in their final summative assignment, their 5,000 word essay. Now, if still having had that formative feedback, your assignment still doesn't uh, meet the requirements um, to, to, to pass the module, you then given clear feedback from the, the marker, and the marker will give you uh, the gradings for the different criteria and next steps to improve. So we've, uh, for, the, for the course, the MED course at Dundee, we, as a staff, we work very hard on giving next steps to help the student improve, whether it's for a resubmission or whether it's for the next module that they're going to study. So bearing in mind that all the staff have been teachers themselves, we really understand assessment and how to give clear feedback. So if you were in a position that you needed to resubmit, you'd be given three weeks to work on that resubmission. And then, um, the, and you would have a chance to meet with your marker who could give you some feedback or they could contact them by email and they could give you clarification. And our advice in that instance is to listen to that feedback, take those ideas on board, learn from them, and then put those changes in. Now, the other thing that you can do from, from the beginning of the first module is access lots of additional resources that the university has. So as a student, if you're paying fees to do the course, the money doesn't just go towards the teaching of the module. It goes towards other support services, such as the library, the student support centre. We have an academic skills centre and all these different organisations and, and teams can give you support. So if you are, um, if you're, I want to say, um, proactive, uh, but, but also if you're a bit pushy and think, I want to get my, my money's worth here and you contact the library for some guidance, the university. A librarian who is a specialist in education, if you contact the Academic Skills Centre for a, for a tutorial in the first few weeks, they will give you the help and support. So if you engage in that, a bit like if you engage in the 30, uh, the, the 17 hour study a week, then you are probably going to be very successful and you're probably not going to have any challenges in that respect. So so that's how the, um, the, the submissions, the assessment and the, the potential resubmission systems work. Did that make sense? If, if people want me to clarify more about that, I'm happy to do so. I, I think it did. Um, and I think Maria, that did answer your question, it was actually quite um, detailed. So yes, I think yeah. that was that brilliant, Dr. Richard. Excellent. And uh, um, there's, a, there's another question with regards to uh, the support that is provided by the tutors. And one of the question is, do you have any drop-in sessions? Um, and if you do, what does this pertain? Uh, what, what will be covered great. in the drop-in session? Great, great question. So the way that each uh, module is organized is slightly different. The, the virtual learning environment, you'll be given access to what we call a module area. And it's a little bit like an intranet site, uh, a bit like if you've used websites. If anyone studied online before, like Future Learn or a, or a, or a um, an organization like that, you work your way through the module materials. Now, in that virtual learning environment, the, we will host the webinars. So for each module, there will be something like eight to 10 live webinars, and they will be a mixture of taught sessions, a bit like today where I've been talking, but there's also a chat feature, there's also a chance for students to work together, and it very much depends on the module you're studying as to the approach that the module leader takes. And if you can't make one of those sessions, they will be recorded and then you can watch them back. And even if you attend the sessions, you can still watch the recordings back. So if in week three in the reflective practice module, we've been discussing um, professionality in education. So what does it mean to be a professional? And then you come to write your assignment and think, I can't remember what we talked about in that professionality session. You can go back and watch the recording again. You don't have to watch the full recording. You can watch you know, bits of it. And we try to organize those at times that suit the cohort. So if there's a particular cohort with a certain geographical region that's represented, 
we may try to put them off a certain time of day to make them accessible for you. Most of them are done about four o'clock UK time. So for yourselves, it's probably evenings. There's then the asynchronous materials you can work with. And as well as the live teaching, there will be an opportunity for what we call Q&As, which might be drop-in sessions, um, especially in the run-up to the assignment. So normally the teaching covers the first 12 weeks of the, of the 17 weeks. And then usually there's four or five weeks for you to go away and work on your assignment as well. But the teaching team are really experienced and the module leaders know when to put things, when to time them and how much to space them out. It's not to put too much stress on you. So you've got a bit of um, flexibility in how you work and also to give you the time at the end to work on that assignment. And as I mentioned in the presentation, if you were coming here to study face to face, you would have face to face lectures, but you wouldn't be allocated a module tutor. Um, because you get face-to-face -face teaching in Dundee on campus, you don't get a tutor allocated to you. We understand as a distance learner, as an online learner, that you do want that point of contact. So there'll be two people for you. There'll be the module leader. You can go and ask them questions about their taught sessions, but there'll also be an allocated tutor who will give you your formative assessment and some feedback on a, a sample of your writing. And you can also have a, a tutorial with them or you can send them an email and they can answer questions on that. So, so yeah, so that's a little bit about how the, the teaching takes place. Um, it's a combination of, of live lecture webinars, Q and A's or drop-ins, and the formative support from your allocated tutor. Excellent, excellent. And uh, the question, the next question is from Fatima. Um, hmm. And have completed my bachelor degree quite some time ago. Uh, do you think, Dr. Richard, that I will still manage to study on a master's level? Um, and I do understand this apprehension. You get quite a lot of students that I'm sure have asked you the same question. Yeah, um, my own experience was I'd studied 15, 20 years before and I'd studied a natural science degree. So I did exams and I did a, a research project, a, a microbiology research project. So moving into to teaching and education, it was quite a, it was quite a change for me. And um, what we try to do is the first module that most people study is reflecting upon practice. We try to do two things. We introduce the concepts and the content which is things like reflective practice, professionalism and professionality. We introduce some big theories in education, but we also try to reintroduce and, and reintegrate people to studying at master's level. The, the university support services that I mentioned, such as the Academic Skills Centre, the library, we have a centre for, for uh, technology enhanced learning. We really encourage students to engage with those uh, sessions as well. So contacting the support staff who can help you out with that, as well as the module areas for the module you're studying at any one time. We have something called the um, MEDS Community Hub and the Community Hub is um, an, an area which all students have access to and it contains useful information. It, in it includes study skills guidance. It includes all the relevant links that you might need uh, with to, to access university help. We also have um, which the university pays for, which you'll have access to for free, we have access to a subscription to something called Cite Them Right. And Cite Them Right is, is both a book and a web-based uh, resource which tells you how to reference in the required Harvard system. So you'll be able to use that. And, um, and if you're unsure about referencing, it has little tutorial videos. It has, and in fact, you could look at this later. You could look up Cite Them Right um, and you won't be able to log into it, but you'll get a preview of it. But once you become a full student, we'll give you your, your login details will allow you to access that. And, and that will help you with some of the technicalities of studying at master's level. When you go on to your final, if you do the full MED, the final dissertation project, you will have an allocated supervisor that will give you lots of specific support. And we have access to things like um, a team who will help you uh, develop a survey. If you want to survey participants for your research project, you maybe want to ask some pupils, some children about their experiences, you want to interview maybe teachers, then they will they will give you support and help with that. So there's lots of resources available. Um, we, we, we want you to be, uh, to be greedy learners. We want you to be um, quite selfish and ask for lots of help and take advantage of it. 
the students who perhaps um, find things more of a challenge are the ones who who um, hold back a little bit. Maybe culturally, it's not perhaps um, it's not it's not what you're familiar with is to ask lots of questions and to ask for support. Well, we we want you to take advantage of that support. There are people employed within the university to give that help, um, and we'd really encourage that. So so hopefully that that sets your your mind at ease a little bit about that transition. If you haven't studied for a while, or maybe if you've studied in a different area to studying on the MED. Brilliant. Okay, and uh, Mohammed's question is, um, if I do require a study break, how long hmm. will the university permit me to do so? Okay, so we do allow for temporary withdrawals, and um, I'd mentioned before about the assessment, if, if you have to resubmit once, uh, you get that opportunity and um, if something happened during that submission period um, you know the, the people have problems maybe in their professional life in their personal life you know an example might be you know a bereavement or p potentially some sort of for example with covid there obviously people with ill health you can apply for something called mitigating circumstances where you provide evidence for, for those difficulties we hope you don't have them but if you do and, and options there can be to give you an extension maybe three to six weeks of an extension or you can ap apply for um, an additional attempt. So for example, during a resubmission, you were very ill, so you couldn't submit in time. You could apply for a, for a repeat, another opportunity to submit. Um, and you can also apply for something called temporary withdrawal. Normally that would be from one semester, six months. It could be up to a year. Um, we, we discourage any anything beyond a year because actually what you can do is you can exit, you can choose to exit instead. So say you completed the certificate, but you found studying alongside full-time work too much of a challenge, we'd encourage you to exit with a certificate. And then what you could do is you could consider reapplying later, rejoining at that stage and, and claiming what's called recognition of prior learning for the 60 credits you've already completed. And then what you could do is you could rejoin at that particular stage. So a different range of options, including extensions, potential for mitigating circumstances, temporary withdrawals, and then ultimately we've got the exit points at 60 credits or 120 credits where you could leave with a certificate or a diploma. So they're the, they're the various options available to you. We, we also give you a, an advisor of studies. So currently the advisor of studies for the Stafford group is quite helpfully called Helen also. So Helen is currently the advisor of studies. Helen is um, an academic member of staff who has got lots of experience in international schools, lots of experience in higher education um, as well. And Helen would advise you on any of these issues. So if you're in difficulties, don't, don't, be, um, don't be nervous about contacting us, don't be shy. You'd contact Helen um, and Helen would liaise with, with the Stafford staff as well. And we'd, um, we'd, we'd talk about that. What I'm not sure about Helen is, is any impact on fees from that if you took a temporary withdrawal. So it would probably be better to check with Stafford in that circumstance what would happen there. I don't know if there's if you wanted to add anything to that. That's quite correct, Richard. Yes. Um, you know, we do encourage the applicants, if they are going to do a temporary withdrawal, to get in touch with our accounts department and they will advise them um, on, on the fees uh, section. Um, I'll just answer the next question uh, related to fees. Um, kindly note that fees are not determined by nationality. They are determined by where students are currently working and residing. So if you do want to see what the fee structure is, and we've got a very, very flexible fee structure for um, our applicants, uh, please do get in touch with your academic consultant um, who will be able to give you more guidance on that as well. Um, and I'll just answer the next question with regards to um, a bachelor degree. Uh, sorry, I, I, do, I do not have a bachelor degree. Okay, um, as Dr. Richard has said, it's very important to have a bachelor degree for entry into the program. Unfortunately, this program does not accept students on a non-standard entry. And a non-standard entry means on extensive working experience. You must have a bachelor degree. Okay. Um, and the next question is also pertaining English and IELTS. 
Um, we will get our academic consultant to get in contact with you. There are other methods of meeting the English requirement and your academic consultant will be in a position to provide you um, the various options. So we will definitely get in touch with you to give you some information on that as well. Okay, um, and a very last question which is pertaining to the graduation. If I cannot attend the graduation, how do I get my degree certificate? Will this get, get posted to me um, or uh, do I have to organise a courier? Okay. No, we, 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 post, we will post these certificates to anywhere in the world, do not worry about that. It's very important that you keep your personal date details as a student updated with us, but also with Stafford separately, because we do have problems occasionally where somebody starts the course, they move to another country or they change address, they forget to update their details on what's called eVision. So within the University of Dundee, you, you have the, um, the virtual learning environment, which is called My Dundee, but you also have an area called eVision where you keep all your um, your personal details and you can access your grades and your transcripts and things like that. Um, it's really important you keep that updated with your address because we then get a panicked email going, oh, I forgot to tell you I've moved and your certificate has been posted to a different country. <laughs> now we can get duplicate certificates if that happens, but it's better to give the right address. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll post the certificates out, don't worry about that. Correct. Fantastic. Okay, so I have managed to group all the questions together this evening. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us and also for Dr. Richard um, very kindly uh, going through the program and answering the questions. Um, as Dr. Richard said, uh, the application deadline is coming up quite soon. It's not very far yeah. away. Uh, so please do send in your application documents as soon as possible so that we can get that very important unconditional offer for you. Okay, thank you very much everyone for joining us this evening. Thank you again Dr. Richard and hope to see you soon and uh, good night everyone and hope to see you on our program. Yeah, great to see everybody, lovely to meet you all. Thank you so much for joining us. Cheerio, bye-bye.